Well, we are coming up on a major market milestone. Tomorrow marks the 10 year anniversary since the market hit its lowest levels of the financial crisis. And the late great CNBC anchor, our friend Mark Haynes, was on air that day and made, of course, this now famous call. However, I'm going to step out on a limb here. Uh, this I is really, the big hold on, I, everyone. I, We've been I, waiting I think for this. we're at the bottom. I really do. Oh, good to see Mark in any form. He is missed. Well, since the market bottom, the S&P has been on a wild ride. And Mark called it. He nailed it. We hit 666, probably an ominous number. We're now at 2748. That, my friends, is a gain of 312% since the famous Haynes bottom. All right, let's now bring in Joel Schulman, founder of Entrepreneur Shares, and Drew Mattis, chief market strategist at MetLife Investment Management. Uh, obviously, Mark still missed. Great guy, amazing yeah. anchor. Um, but a great call as well. Fantastic. And you guys have noted that since that day, we have had averaged annualized returns of about 15%. 15, 16%. Is there any possibility that kind of number continues? Because we were coming off, of course, the financial crisis. Right. Well, it's 15, 16%. Entrepreneurial stocks since that time are up 25%. So within cohorts, when we think back 10 years ago, we had uh, the top three stocks were IBM, 10% of the, the, the Dow Jones. Uh, we had Exxon and Chevron. So we had 25% of the stocks in three, I mean, 25% of the weight in Dow Jones in three stocks, primarily you know, in this uh, energy and industrial space. So when we look at today, today's market's uh, appreciably different. And when we think about going back to 92 and, and even going back historically, you know, 10%, we, we, we're, we're up uh, 15, 16% since uh, 2000, uh, the, the, the bottom of the crash. But if you go back prior, we're only about 10%, and that's a historical average. Well, I'm going to ask Drew an even easier question. Are you ready for a softball? <laughs> I would like a softball. What's the next 10 years going to be? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, uh, you know, it, it could look pretty good. You know, when we think about the, what the last 10 years has looked like from a fundamental perspective, uh, we, we have not developed the same kind of excesses that we saw heading into 2008, for example. And I think one of the reasons why you see the market behaving in, it's sometimes like in, in a concerning way right now uh, is because a, a lot of people remember 2008 as, a, as what a recession looks like. And, of course, that's not what a recession looks like. That's what something much worse than a recession looks like. Yeah, we like. were bruised. We were battered. Millions unemployed. The markets had collapsed. Banks were shuttering. The Federal Reserve came in. The world came in. So if you, you don't see any scenario like that on no. the horizon. If you could tell me one number, I could tell you what the next 10 years looks like. And if you tell me what productivity looks like over the next 10 years, and I'll tell you what growth and the economy are going to look like over the next 10 years. Can you tell us? I, I actually think it, it could look pretty good. Um, I think the productivity numbers we got yesterday were quite encouraging. Um, they are a sign that if you get growth back up to a higher pace, like we've seen because of the tax cut, uh, that productivity can follow that. You know, Joel, there's two things, though. There's the, mar there's the yeah. economy. That's mm -hmm. one thing. And there's the stock market. Right. And sometimes they're the same thing. Mm. Sometimes they're not. <laughs> right? Yeah. They can diverge because stocks look forward. Yeah. What do you see for stocks this year? Maybe for another two years. I'm not going to ask you 10 right. years. Yeah. I just hope we're oh, here in okay, 10 years. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, this year, of course, uh, we, we've had uh, a great run since Christmas, and um, we're having our first off week. But uh, these things are to be expected. I mean, obviously, in the next month, we, we've got the big, uh, the, the big thing that's hanging out there in the China deal, and you know that's going to move the markets five, ten percent. I think either way, within within. Looks a week like or we're two. pulling away from a deal, though, or maybe the Chinese are just playing hardball. What if we don't get? A oh, trade deal. If we don't get a trade deal, we've got uh, we've got a lot of room to fall. I mean, the same the same problems we had in the fourth quarter of last year can can happen right again. So, I mean, we had a lot baked into 2019 so far, uh, assuming a China deal goes through. Now, as you you just pointed out, I mean, China's down four percent of last night, and they they were the the strongest market as you also pointed out year to date. So, a lot's being baked into their markets too. And last year they got clobbered. So when we think forward, you know, this year, next year, um, we're back to 2018 levels. Uh, we're still about six to eight percent off of the, the highs of 2018. The China deal goes through. I think we, we go through that uh, because of the profits that we have underlying with the, the, many of the big companies and small companies. I'll take it a little bit easier on you this time, Drew, <laughs> just because I've known you for 15 years. So, I, you know, what's the next century look like? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do you see for the millennia? No, it, it is. <laughs> Is a bad jobs number today the best scenario for the market only because then it maybe removes some of that Fed uncertainty? Uh, I have a hard time with the idea that bad news is good news. Yeah, you don't uh, like that Fed put. 
idea? Yeah, I, look, what I think you want to see happening in the bond market is you want to see the yield curve steepening because if the yield curve steepening, that allows the Fed to keep hiking rates, but hiking rates in a way that the market's happy with. So you'd rather see a good number that portends underlying economic strength, even if it puts the Fed discussion back in play? Yes, as long as we're not talking about... The worst thing for the market is if the Fed has to play catch-up. You want the Fed always slightly on par with what the market is hoping for.